Hi, welcome back to PC Builder. I'm Jason. This is Boost My Build, the series where we take your PC builders, we tear them up, we put them back together and massively increase your performance. And we've got some insane builds, including we're gonna do an upgrade path. We're gonna take a build from about four or five years ago. We're gonna look at upgrading the CPU, the GPU, both of them at the same time for the same budget and see what makes the most sense or is it just time to build a new PC? And we'll take a look at a $1,700 max FPS 1440p build. It's not giving us anywhere near enough FPS. Remember, if you got value out of the video, give it a like. It makes a huge difference to the channel, especially this guy right here. And of course, subscribe and click that. Oh. Are you serious? With that, let's jump into it. This video is sponsored by Micro Center, my favorite tech place on earth. Great news. Micro Center with 25 locations across the US is opening three new stores, starting with Indianapolis this summer. And they have insane deals on the upgrades you need. New in-store customers get $25 off all CPUs using the link in the description, or get an entire gaming PC like this Lenovo Legion with Ryzen 5700G, RTX 3050, and 16 gigabytes of RAM for just $699. Want to get into 3D printing? Micro Center has insane deals on 3D printers as low as $99 and they offer free shipping on inland filament. Right now, click on the link in the video description for store locations and to see their insane deals on PC parts, monitors, and more. All right, we've got Nemesis RTX. Absolutely love the name. Says, hi, Jason, Mr. Bear. They've been a huge fan of the channel since 2021 and they've decided to upgrade to a PC coming from a GTX 1050 laptop for five years and you've been watching me since 2021? Let's get on this upgrade. They want to build their own 1440 PC for AAA titles, cyberpunks and such, and they want to go NVIDIA RTX 4070 because they would like to mod the games, and I guess it works better than the AMD GPUs, and they want to get more than 8 gigabytes of VRAM. Yes, more than 8 gigs of VRAM in 2023, please. They also want to be somewhat future-proof, so they're going to get a single stick of DDR5 RAM. What is going on here? No, no. Their budget's $970. They wouldn't mind going a little over a thousand. All right, let's see what we've got here. Oh my goodness, ouch, ouch, ouch. It is so painful to look at these mistakes. Mistakes. You made one horrible mistake, but it has cascaded failure across your entire build to the point where your whole build has completely collapsed, in my opinion. What am I talking about? Well, let's start off with the budget. $1,058, so you're basically about 100 bucks over your $970 budget, and you're $60 over, I can finish a little bit over 1000 So that's not a great place to be, especially given the amount of work that we have to do here. What happened to this build? Well, let's talk about the GPU. Let's start off there. RTX 4070, honestly, given the state of the market, 4060 Ti supposedly coming soon-ish, and is only gonna have eight gigs of VRAM, so that's a non-starter. There's supposedly a 16 gigabyte version of it coming sometime soon, because Nvidia finally realized, oh no, we totally screwed up the VRAM, so forget that as well. And honestly, if you're looking RTX, cards, this is it. I would consider the 6950 XT for other gaming purposes, but I know for your modding purposes, you have to have NVIDIA. So honestly, this is the right choice. But here's the huge failure that we made the cascade across the rest built. You decided for whatever reason to go with one stick of DDR5 5200 CO42 for $52. And I get, I think you thought you were being smart here and thought you were saving money. Let's tell you why not only did you not save money, you completely hobbled your PC performance and this is not future proofing. D no DDR5 sold right now is future proof given how fast the speeds are advancing whatever you buy right now two years from now when you go to do a new build the ram is going to feel so slow it'd be like trying to use ddr4 2400 you know that you bought four or five years ago and you're like oh my gosh that ram is so slow why is 5200 seal 42 bad because it's stupidly slow compared to ddr4 3200 seal 16 that you can get for 20 bucks almost half the price of this stuff that would have been a better investment if you want to spend this amount on 3600 seal 16 and that would have given us more performance let's talk about why one stick is bad so yes technically ddr R5 is dual channel per stick. You're like, oh, well, I get two channels, whereas for DDR4, I would have had to have two sticks. So I'm taking care of, I've got my dual channel. No, because DDR5 is a new architecture. You can get up to four channels. You're only using 50% of your channels with one stick. It doesn't forget the dual whatever comparison between the generations. They're different architectures. Focus on maximizing getting all the channels in use on your board that would require two sticks regardless of DDR4 or DDR5. That's why you're hobbling your performance here, by I think up to 20, 25% in some of the testing that I've seen. So this is a complete non-starter. And then here's part of the cascading failure. So we went with the i3-1200F, I think because you wanted to use DDR5, not a bad CPU, but 
honestly, at this GPU level, I think you got to think about going up to the Ryzen 5600 or i5 12400 would have been another potential option. 5600, i5 12400 will give you at this GPU level about 10 to 15% more performance and they only cost about 40 to 50 bucks more. So that's the direction I would have gone. And here's where your failure continues to cascade. As a result of wanting to do DDR5 on a B series motherboard, you had to end up buying the B760 DS3H by Gigabyte instead of the B660. Why is that? When B660 came out, DDR5 was stupid expensive and everyone was still buying DDR4 RAM. So they only produced a tiny amount of DDR5 B660s and they're all gone now. So this is what you end up doing. And you end up spending $40 more than the corresponding DDR4 board. And again, we're spending more on the board and we could have gotten a different CPU motherboard combo instead. The rest of the build, I actually don't mind, except listen, Silicon Power A60, great drive, 512, the minimum I would recommend. 10 bucks more, we could have gotten a terabyte. I just don't see why we didn't do that. And then the Deepcool CC560, decent case for $67, but these fans are LED, they're not ARGB, so you can't control the color, so that's the color you're gonna get. If you're cool with that, if you're looking for that kind of mint looking case, this actually has really good airflow to it, but honestly, I'd spend about the same, maybe even a little less, and get ARGB instead. Power supply, I'm not a huge fan of going with a CT tier rated PSU at this GPU level. I'd like to see if we can get to the B tier, but I know we're already over budget, so we may just have to kind of live with it. We'll see. So for $1,058, we just, I feel like we completely hobbled our performance by making one mistake and having it cascade throughout the build. I totally get it. I know it's hard to do this stuff. And I think you deserve more performance. You've got that terrible laptop we got to replace. So let's get you the performance that you actually need. I call this the $1,000 actually future-proofed 1440p gaming PC build because this actually has a future upgrade path and this is a build I feel like we're going to be able to use now and into the future. Let's start off with the GPU. I stuck it out with your GPU. I really think that right now if you have to have NVIDIA, the 4070 is the card to get. I would probably skip the 4060 Ti given the rumors that I've seen about it so far. Even if there's a 16 gigabyte version of it, I would probably start here. I hope these cards do come down in price because I think they're a little pricey right now for 12 gigabytes. But if you have to have NVIDIA, this is the performance level you're looking for and it's a good performer. It's just I'm not happy about the price. Let's talk about upgrading the platform because I went with the Ryzen 5 5600, still considerably cheaper than the 12400F. I don't know what Intel is doing with the 12400F. Do they just like not want to sell those CPUs? Because honestly, they're the same level of performance. So I'm going to go Ryzen here, $136 right now. We're going to use the included box cooler in this. It's going to give us 10 up to 15% more performance with that RTX 4070 than the i3-1200F. For the motherboard we're comboing it with, which is the Gigabyte B550M DS3H. AC, you can get Wi-Fi with this one. You can get this board right now for $88 over at Newegg. I mean, run, don't walk and pick that board up. That is an insane price. So the combo together is gonna come out less than the combo that you were gonna put together and we're gonna get more performance. And we are going with great RAM here. We're gonna go with DDR4 3600CL16, a two-stick kit two by eight gigabytes for $52, the same price you're gonna pay for that single terrible stick of DDR5 super slow RAM. We're gonna get much, much faster RAM. And this is good stuff, by the way. I believe these are Samsung B-Dyes. This is gonna be really, really good RAM for your system now and in the future. And if you wanna to upgrade to like a 5800X3D in a couple of years, especially as those CPU prices continue to drop over time or maybe pick a used one up, then this RAM is gonna be great for a 5800X3D and that'll kind of keep you going. I couldn't let you go only go with 500 gigs at a thousand dollar price point. So I did up you to one terabyte. It's $39 right now. So the dry prices have come up four or five dollars in the last couple of days. They were usually more like 34, $35. It's a couple of bucks. So don't worry about it. Get one terabyte. You will thank me in the future. For the case, we did come down here. I went with the Antec NX320. This kind of keeps going on and off sale over at Newegg. Sometimes a promo code, sometimes it's a rebate. Here's what I would do if, you, if you're hard stuck on the budget and you can't afford to get another ARGB fan from the back. So this is three fans. This one has the least airflow because of the way this is cut out. It looks really cool, but least airflow. I would literally just take this fan off and I would put it in the back here and you'd have two fans for the front intake and one fan, rear fan. And that will be plenty for what you're doing right now. And I think this case looks really slick for $55. For the power supply, I, I, honestly, I could not get us to a B tier rated one and keep us anywhere near our budget. So we're gonna bite the bullet. We're gonna go with the Bit Phoenix Formula Bronze. It's a C tier rated unit. It's quite a bit cheaper than that EVGA one at the same wattage, so 700 watts. It is what it is. I know I, I know some people aren't gonna be happy about the kind of ketchup and mustard cables over here. You can't always use black tape around some of them, but if we're trying to save money and get underneath our price point, this is the way to go. 
Otherwise, if you can spend another 20 bucks, that EVGA unit does come with black sleeve cables. Maybe buy that instead. So all told for $1,026. That's right. We came in just a little bit over $1,000, which is where you want it to be. We're getting you an insane amount more performance. We're not hobbling our RAM. We're actually getting a two by eight gigabyte DDR4 3600 CL16 fast DDR4 kit with a Ryzen 5600. It's going to give you more performance on that RTX 4070 to do all of your game modding in Cyberpunk and all the other games you're looking for. We got you an actual RGB case. You have real RGB instead of just LED fans and we upped your storage to a full terabyte for only a little bit more. So I hope you feel like your build is boosted. We've got not defeats. Not defeats says, hey, Jason, third time posting hope. You see it. Oh, I see you now. Third time's a charm. Your dad wants to do gaming at 1440p and wants to do 3D modeling using Onshape and or Blender. Really likes a fractal north case. Oh, no, not the fractal north case again. And wants RGB along with it. His budget's 1500 to 1700. Don't know whether or not to go AMD or Nvidia here. So now you gave me two different lists. Let's take a look at the Nvidia list because I would recommend Nvidia if you're definitely going to do a lot of Blender work. Let's see what you got. Oh, Okay, another one of these builds where yes, technically if we put everything together and we assembled it, it'll post, it'll run. The problem is we've introduced serious performance bottlenecks all up and down the build. We've completely imbalanced our CPU and GPU combo. And for $1,700, $1,654, which is where you finished out, I just feel like we've come way under our performance goals here. So let's start with the GPU, RTX 4070, $600 not enough to spend on a $1,600 build. We should be investing more in our GPU here. To me, this tells me that we've completely oversized some other components. And I know you like that Fractal Design North case, but $150 is something we might want to consider. I'd go at least the 4070 Ti here. Fortunately, the next NVIDIA option up from there is ridiculous at $1,150 right now for a 4080. Maybe we will consider a 7900 XTX instead. And I can see where we spent a lot of our money on the i7 13700K. I get that we're doing Blender animation and other kind of work, but my understanding is this is a hybrid, mostly gaming, but also doing some of those professional applications. To me, the 13700K is just not worth the extra price premium. $410 for the CPU is super steep. And I can see we're actually hobbling this CPU with the RAM that we've got. We went with DDR4 3200 CL16 RAM. Ah, that's too slow for a unlocked 13700K. In my opinion, I would go at least 3600 CL16. And if I wanted to go faster, I'd go DDR5. And DDR5 for like the 13600K, 13700K, 13900K, given the overall you know value of the system, is now a valid option if you want more performance out of those CPUs, given that you can get a pretty good kit for around $100, even 32 gigs. I don't have a problem with the cooler Thermite Peerless Assassin. It's kind of sneaking up there in price. It's getting more popular. What are you going to do? That's just kind of the nature of the game with anything gets super popular. Everyone starts buying it and they're like, oh, hey, we could sell this for more money. And honestly, even at $48 or $50, this still is the best price to performance cooler, though it is getting close to like the deep cool AG uh, 620 or the AK 620. Those are both great coolers as well. For the motherboard, we went with the Gigabyte Z690 UD. This is nothing wrong with this motherboard. $169. Nothing really right with this motherboard either. It doesn't have upgraded audio on it. I know a lot of the boards, the Z690 boards that I was recommending for 13th gen Intel have completely sold out at this point and it doesn't seem like they're making anymore. We're left with a lot of boards out there that just have kind of mediocre features on them for like $170, but we could go a little bit cheaper here. For the drive, I don't mind the Silicon Power UD90. I would have gone with the A80. The difference is the UD90 slightly newer drive. It's got a very effective host memory buffer process on it, but if we're gonna move a lot of files around to kind of heavier write, I probably want that DRAM cache. I would definitely go A80 and I actually think it's even a little bit cheaper. Yeah, we went for the Fractal Design North. I get it's got the wood panel. You feel super designy around it. That's great. If this makes you happy, I'm fine with investing the money here. For the power supply, 850 watts for 120. I think these are good units. The Cooler Master Gold 850. But, you know, 120 to 130 dollars for this unit right now kind of feels a little overpriced. I think we might be able to find something similar performance tier, but just a little cheaper. So all told for 1654 dollars, I just feel like we lost tons of performance on the table. We've introduced system bottlenecks where we didn't need them. We've oversized our CPU and undersized our GPU. I just feel like we're leaving so much performance on the table and you deserve a better build. OK, I called this a 1700 dollar 4K gaming and creator build because you're going to get massive performance at 4K in both gaming 
as well as creator workloads. Now note, this is an AMD build. I also did an Intel i5 13600KF build. However, that one comes in quite a bit over our price limit for the same level of performance. I will leave it linked down in the video description if you wanna check it out instead. Right now, the reason is that the Ryzen 7700X is on super sale for $294. That is an insane value. You can also get the 7700 for 320. That does come with the included Wraith Prism cooler with it. This is gonna give you insane levels of production and it's gonna give you top tier gaming performance as well. The GPU we're pairing with this, we went with the RTX 4070 Ti. We went with the Asus Tough Gaming for only $800. We're gonna get an MSRP 4070 Ti. Honestly, they're mostly interchangeable. I just picked this one. Right now, Asus is kind of in the doghouse for a lot of people. The GPU division does a really good job, I should say. But if you don't like this, you can get one by Gigabyte or MSI or literally anybody else for the same price, $799. Now we could have gone with the 7900 XT here, more gaming performance, but not quite the same level of third party support on applications like Blender and others. I know it's getting a lot better, especially in Blender with some of the newer updates. I don't wanna give your dad any headaches with it whatsoever. I'd rather give him something like this. We'll sacrifice a little bit of gaming performance to make sure that his life is kind of completely cool when he goes into his uh, you know, animation programs. So the cooler, we went with the Thermoid Peerless Assassin. Again, if you wanna get the 7700 and use the Wraith Prism cooler on that instead, that's absolutely fine. But this is gonna give us a lot more performance. We'll turn on Precision Boost Overdrive. And we'll just let this thing crank if we want. Honestly, for $50, an amazing cooler. For the motherboard, the motherboards for B650 have come down so much so in price. That's one of the price advantages they have right now over, unfortunately, the Z690 and Z790 boards is you can get a board like this for $125 absolutely adequate, the Gigabyte B650DS3H. Really, it's got all you need. It's got a couple of M.2 slots on it, plenty of rear panel connectivity, a really, really nice entry-level motherboard. As I've said before about Ryzen 7000 boards, if you want upgraded audio and things like that, go out and get an external DAC or something. Unfortunately, they have price gated the upgraded features behind stupidly expensive motherboards. I hope they do not make that mistake in the future. For the round, we went with DDR5 5600CL32. $95 right now for 32 gigs. It's Team Force. It looks super cool. RGB on If you want to spend a little bit more money here, this is probably where I might drop just a little bit more. And I look for like a 5600CL28 kit. I'm a little leery of the 6000 kits on B650 motherboards given some of the RAM compatibility issues, although not with Gigabyte. All my Gigabyte boards, I've had no problems, mostly with MSI, with the SUS, with other boards, I've had some issues getting a clock up to 6,000. That's why I'm, I'm, I'm not advising people get 6,000 speed with B650 motherboards right now. I think this is a great kit. Instead, just get the lower cast latency. It's effectively the same speed. For the drive, we went with Silicon Power A80. It's just got a DRAM cache on it versus the UD90, which is a slightly newer drive. You probably won't see a performance difference between the two, but if you do any large, file writes then the DRAM cache is nice to have and it's 10 bucks cheaper. For the power supply, because Ryzen 7000 is so much more power efficient than 13 Gen Intel, this is one of the areas where it kind of made a big deal in terms of the price. Only having to go with a 750 watt PSU like the RM750E, A tier rated, amazing PSU unit, saved us quite a bit of money overall versus the Intel build where we had to go with a much more expensive 850 watt unit. Right now, they're, for whatever reason, once you jump up to 850, the prices just kind of go sky high. Also, you did forget to add additional fans. Don't forget fans. I just got you an Arctic F12 PST. That means these fans daisy chain together. Really, really good fans by Arctic. You get five of them in a pack for only 30 bucks and they daisy chain together. Remember your case does come with two included fans. So you have a total of seven. You'll be absolutely fine in terms of airflow. So for $1,715, just $15 over your budget, we're gonna give you insane levels of performance at the CPU. We've jumped your GPU way up to an RTX 4070 Ti, which if you want NVIDIA right now, that's kind of rules the rules, given the 4080 is so expensive. We stuck it out with your Fractal Design North case. I know you really, really like that case. And we went with a super performative platform in the Ryzen 7 7700X with a good level motherboard. And we got you that RGB on your RAM. So I hope you feel like your build is boosted. Okay, let's take an existing build and see, is it worth upgrading or is it time to build new? I know so many people are in this situation where maybe you have a build that's a couple years old. You're like, can I salvage anything out of this? Can we just upgrade the GPU, the CPU? What should we be doing? Or should you just be looking to build something new? We've got Datu and Datu says they're looking to boost their current build. They haven't been paying attention to tech for the last three years, very common among PC builders. You build your PC, you enjoy it for a couple years. Suddenly you notice it's not really running games the way you want it to anymore. And you're like, oh no, what do I do now? They want to 
use the upgraded PC for gaming at high FPS 1440p and as a workstation for Adobe Creative Suite. They're in Canada, they're ready to invest eight to $900 Canadian, I believe that's like $668, that's not a lot of money. And they wanna upgrade the components of my choosing. Let's take a look. All right, let's punch through this build. And honestly, this is a pretty good build from you know five or six years ago. So we've got the Intel i7 8700. Now this is a locked CPU. I think a lot of people bought it in eighth generation. These are good CPUs. About the same time we had like, I believe the Ryzen 2600X was roughly 10% slower in gaming than this. So now they're probably about equivalent, right? So that's how I would think about this, about a 2600X, maybe slightly faster than that. It's got six cores, 12 threads. Honestly, still quite performative. It's not the i5 version, which is, it was only six cores and six threads. So it does have multi-threading on it, which is nice for our hyper-threading as Intel calls it. But one of the penalties of getting a locked Intel CPU from the time is that you know, with a motherboard like a B series motherboard, like a B360M, the one you have here, and this is not the greatest motherboard, by the way, this is a really super cut down motherboard, but if it's been working for you, that's great. One of the penalties is that we were only able, I believe to clock the memory up to 2666, maybe it was 2933, I can't quite remember. You opted for a DDR4 2666 CL16 kit, which I'm sure at the time seemed relatively fast. And this is what I'm telling a lot of folks who are buying super fast DDR5 with the hopes that it's gonna future proof. In a couple of years, your 6,000 speed DDR5 or even 6400 speed DDR5 RAM you're buying right now is gonna feel like this kit because you're gonna have like 8,000, 9,000 speed kits out there. You also ended up with a one terabyte SSD, great Samsung 970 Evo, fantastic drive. And the GPU driving this is an RTX 2070 Super. Really, really nice one. Honestly, probably even kind of a collector's edition. I'm not quite sure you could check. And then of course you got the Corsair. I believe this is probably the RM650 non-X. I think you just probably selected the wrong one in here because it's not from 2021. You're probably a little older, but I believe that's still a B tier rated PSU. That being said, five or six years starting to get towards maybe thinking about the end of life for that unit. You know, I wouldn't, would I necessarily repurpose it in a new build? Uh, I'm not quite sure. And finally, we've got the Noctua NHU12S, very capable CPU cooler, can certainly reuse this unit. It's got five heat pipes on it, very, very good cooler. And we can, of course, just with a little bit of thermal paste and alcohol, clean it off and uh, repurpose it into a new build if we wanted to. So let's take a look at just upgrading the GPU. I know this is the dream of so many system builders, like I'm gonna build this mega system and in the future, it's gonna be super future-proof. I'm just gonna be able to drop in a GPU, no problems whatsoever and just get amazing FPS, but is that the case? So here I went and spent $800 Canadian. I couldn't really find anything faster than that. I was trying to get the 6950 XT in here because it is 15% faster at 1440p. That would be the GPU I want to go with, but I couldn't fit it in with your power supply being only 650 watts. It's way more power hungry than the 4070. So we settled for the 4070, which is still a great GPU in terms of overall performance. I don't want to denigrate it. And if we take a look at the tech power up GPU database here with a highly performative CPU, we could expect 78% more performance than the 2070 Super that you already have. Like, hey, Jason, that sounds amazing. Sign me up. But wait, is that actually the case? Let's take a look at tech spots data when they compared Ryzen CPUs of the same generation. Now remember, our 8700 will perform a little bit faster than the 2600X. So here's the 2600X and let's look at the versus the 5600X. You can see with the, the CPU and GPU combo that you currently have, which is roughly equivalent to the 5700XT, really no difference just dropping in a new CPU upgrade. So certainly upgrading the GPU here is gotta be our main focus of spending money. But at what point does it make sense to also upgrade the rest of the platform and that's our question because if we're looking at 1440p highest quality, even with a 3090, which is roughly as fast as the RTX 4070, we're picking up about 25% going from the 2600X to the i7-8700-ish you have right now up to something like a Ryzen 5600. Right now, Ryzen 5600 is relatively cheap too, but you'd have to get new RAM because your RAM's not portable. You have to get a new motherboard because obviously your B360 motherboard's not gonna work with it. And you have to get the 5600. But if we actually look at medium quality settings in high FPS games, the difference becomes even larger. So we got the 3090 here, which is equivalent to the 4070. And we got the 2600X to the 5600X, and we're looking more at like a 33% improvement by upgrading the overall CPU platform. Again, no difference if we just suck it out with your GPU. So upgrading the GPU does make sense here. But we just do some real napkin math here, and we take 
the penalty of the CPU because it's older is about a 25% FPS penalty and we multiply it by the expected gain over the 2070 Super, 78% times 75%, we get about a 58% overall performance in FPS if we just upgrade the GPU and nothing else. Now, this is some serious napkin math. There really is no way to know for sure unless you actually have the components and benchmark them against each other, but that's not realistic for you to do, especially when <laughs> 600 something dollars to upgrade your PC. We have to come up with some kind of metric on what the best upgrade is. Now let's take a look at upgrading the CPU and the GPU at the same time, reusing as much of your stuff as we can. Fortunately, it's mostly the cooler, it's the drive, and it's the power supply that are effectively reusable in your build. The RAM is too slow, so we're gonna get rid of that for $900 Canadian. We're gonna do a Ryzen 5 5600 for $189. Remember, this is Canadian dollars. We're gonna do a relatively cheap ASRock B550 and Pro 4 with upgraded audio on it too, by the way. And I did check at Newegg Canada. I'm seeing reviews that despite the fact it does not have BIOS flashback, that this board is coming with a BIOS that works with the Ryzen 5600 Don X, which is great. And then we're gonna go with relatively fast DDR4 3600 CL16 RAM. This is a Kingston Fury Renegade kit. We use these in a number of our builds, two by eight gigabytes. And the great thing about this platform is that you could also drop in a 5800X3D in the future for another upgrade path if you want it. Now we're reusing your amazing Noctua NH U12S cooler and we are reusing the power supply, but we have a brand new fastest and biggest GPU I could afford upgrading the platform. I went with the ASRock Challenger Pro RX 6750XT. Now, of course, we are expecting AMD to launch the 7600, possibly the 7700 coming very soon. So you can argue maybe you shouldn't be looking at this. Maybe you should be waiting for those launches. You can make that decision. But all told for $900 Canadian, what does that net us? Well, if we go back to our relative performance chart for your 2070 Super to a 6750XT, it gives us roughly 27%. Again, this is all back, kind of back of the napkin math right here, but not as great as just upgrading the GPU by itself. But that leads me to my kind of final point here is that maybe what you should do is just sell off off the old system. If you can sell it for $400 Canadian, your old system, and that's Canadian dollars, so what is that, about $300 US. I think you probably get that for it. You could do this build, which we got for just under $1,300 Canadian. Again, the $900 you have, plus the $400 Canadian that you're gonna sell your old system for, and here's what you would get. You'd get a Ryzen 5600, that setup that we just talked about. You'd get that with the 4070, and we're putting in a new power supply, and I did include a new drive in here. You can either take your old drive out and put it in the new system. Remember to do a fresh Windows install or just reset the windows on it. And you can drop, drop in the MP33 on the old system if you want. You get 78% more performance by doing that. Remember 58% performance, just upgrading the GPU and building a new system just within the confines of your existing budget and reusing some components, you can get a 27% increase. So to me, the thing that makes the most sense is sell your old system and buy a brand new one and basically put together a brand new one and that will give you the most performance. Remember, if you got value out of the video, please give it a like, it makes a huge difference to the channel and of course subscribe. Click that bell icon, that way you get notified when we release cool content. Speaking of cool content, can't get enough of Boost My Build? Don't worry, we've got an entire playlist right here. All our latest episodes, did you catch them all? They're a lot of fun, and we'll catch you on the next one.